Manx Radio Podcasts, powered by Shaw. Women today. I'm Samantha Hurd. I'm the road safety manager at the Isle of Man Constabulary. I think to start, we need to state that the safety of vulnerable road users is actually a really complex issue. And in the Isle of Man, we're going to be looking at a lot of different ideas to improve safety for all vulnerable road users, not just people who cycle, but people who walk and people who ride horses as well. This story has come from the UK, which has uh, recently announced that they're going to have a review into cycle safety. It's going to be a very wide-ranging review and it's going to look at lots and lots of different things and the evidence for and against those um, of what you can do to improve safety of, of all sorts of things relating to cycling. And so that won't just be looking at helmets and high visibility, but this is just something that has been picked out as a particular argument and it is often picked out as a, a, as the silver bullet to these problems and actually it's a lot more complex than that and um, you know we need to look at things like cycle training which we do have here on the Isle of Man we need to look at people's awareness of vulnerable road users we need to look at visibility we need to look at whether or not people are able to stop in the distances that they can see Um, so it is I just want to say that it is about more than that Um, The Isle of Man, we're going to be watching the outcome of this review with interest because we do look at the UK and we look at other countries in Europe and around the world and we look at what they've done and how successful that's been. And so going forward, it's going to be interesting to see the outcome of that review. Our advice to people is that there's lots of evidence out there that reflective clothing in particular, so um, things where it bounces the light back uh, against a, a sort of a silvery reflective uh, material. They, they're really, really effective on moving parts of your body, like your ankles and your wrists. So for people who are cycling and for people who are walking and uh, riding horses, you know, you really should consider that if you're out there in the dark, having something reflective on you has got really good evidence behind it that you'll be seen better. But there's a big message out there for drivers too. <laughs> Can you see what's ahead of you? Are you using your lights? Have you turned them on? Are you travelling at a speed where you can stop if somebody was to step out in front of you? And so it's about being aware to expect vulnerable road users on the road um, and looking as well as seeing. So have it in your mind that around this corner there could be a cyclist or, um, you know, going down, you know, an urban road, there could be somebody who steps out between cars, uh, you know, particularly children. So... I think it's a bit more complex than we'd like to think that it is. Uh, so that's that's the high vis side of things. What about helmets? Some countries have gone down the route of mandatory helmet use, whereas others haven't. The UK currently hasn't, and the cycle review will no doubt cover this and um, decide whether or not there's evidence in favour of uh, making helmets mandatory or not, and also looking at the health benefits of uh, cycling outweighing the risks of not wearing a helmet. Um, The North West Children's Trauma Network has presented cases to our emergency department, um, which have shown that injuries and lives have been saved and injuries prevented uh, from helmet use. And so it's very compelling. And, um, you know, when you're considering uh, cycling, you know, the Highway Code does say that you should wear a helmet. And so at the moment, um, certainly the argument is that you should wear a helmet, whether or not there's enough argument out there to make it mandatory, that is... Again, the evidence will decide that. But our advice would be to wear a helmet. Especially on the Isle of Man, actually, there are so many cyclists over here. Is there something to be said for perhaps in driver training, having some sort of element of awareness of cyclists incorporated in your sort of driver training as well, so that we know better how to be on the roads together? I certainly think so. I mean, when we're talking about sharing the road safely together, um, I think we need to be quite open and honest about, you know, do we do we have the skills at the moment in our drivers to, to be um, around vulnerable road users? The highway code is quite clear that uh, you should be able to stop within the distance that you can see. So if you're coming around a corner and then come up against a cyclist or somebody who is, um, you know, walking or running or a, a horse rider, you need to be aware that you, that, that could happen. So you need to be sensible about your speed and you need to be sensible about um, you know what could be around the next corner in terms of when you're driving around people who cycle certainly hang back give them uh, space be aware that they've got obstacles that we don't think about like uh, gutters and debris and things like that so they might need to um, you know take a quick action around that so you need to give them plenty of space when passing uh, at at least 1.5 meters if that means you have to hang back and wait a little while before you make an overtaking manoeuvre, then then do so. And actually, you don't 
uh, you don't lose an awful lot out of your journey and you need to be very um, you know, aware that you're in a ton and a half of metal and this person is very vulnerable. And this doesn't just go for cyclists. It also goes for people who are riding horses and people who are walking or running and things like that. You need to just be aware that actually our, our road network is for everybody and we do share it. And so a little bit of thought needs to go into that. And like I said before, it's, this is more than just helmets and high vis. There's actually an awful lot that goes into this and it cuts across all road user groups and lots and lots of different ideas and measures. And I suppose it comes up more so at this time of year because it gets so dark so early. And I suppose it does be- beg the question, actually, when it comes to kids, you're talking about children before. Is it even safe to get, let kids go out on their bicycles at this time of year when it does get so dark so early? I think it's really, really important that people, um, you know, do continue to cycle and that parents, uh, you know, cycle with your children, cycle to school, um, use the road network. It's there to be enjoyed and, and to be transported upon, not just in a car. You know, I actually think that's really important for our health, you know, for our mental health as well, not just physical. What I would say to parents, if you're looking to try and, um, you know, increase your cycling and to cycle to school Um, do that route with your children get used to doing it look at where the hazards might be cycle it at a weekend cycle it at different times of the day you know and, and actually practice what would you do if there was a car parked here what would you do if that part of the road was closed so you've got a bit of contingency planning in there with your children as well if your children um, are keen to cycle then they're going to carry on cycling through their life and so as parents we've got a bit of a responsibility actually Um, it's a brilliant exercise it's really healthy for us but we do have to put a little bit of thought into making sure that our children are competent making sure that we're competent are we wearing a helmet are we wearing um, you know reflective clothing but I don't think that that needs to be a barrier cycling or to walking for that matter and um, it's really nice to get out there on a crisp day it wakes you up um, nicely in the morning so if you're able to do that then you know go for it. Um, I I guess a lot of this wouldn't even be a question and we wouldn't be quite so concerned about this maybe if we had a few more cycle lanes on the island? There is um, a draft active travel strategy that the um, Department of Infrastructure are are leading on. Public health are involved in it, DEF are involved in it, and we're working really closely with them on that as well. So that might well form one of the actions going forward, but it it covers lots and lots of things. And we do want to encourage more people to walk and cycle because it's it's imperative for our health and you know, I think it's it's right that our roads are there to be shared. Women today. Don't sit in the slow lane. Join the fast lane right now with Shaw's all-new Superfast Plus Broadband. Enjoy more bandwidth, amazing speeds and the best value on the island from just £23.95 per month. So don't be left behind. Get a piece of the high-speed action with Superfast Plus Broadband from Shaw. For details, visit our stores in Douglas, Ramsey and Port Erin or click shore.com. Love being sure. Terms and conditions apply.